It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world and the city of brotherly love. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with chief investment officer, my father, the man with the plan, Big Bob Payne. What's shaking on this glorious March weekend, Big Bob? I made a major decision this weekend. I'm going to stick to investing and uh, no longer depend on picking the games in the NCAA tournament. My brackets have completely blown up. <laughs> it's not not good. I huh? not real successful in the uh, in picking the right teams. You know, I don't have a crystal ball when it comes to a lot of things, and it's especially picking basketball teams. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't even have one for the market, so we're really out of luck now. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll just have to stick to our knitting. That's been working well for the last 42 years. Long-term investing. Speaking of long-term investing, Bob, I've got some market trivia for you this morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we officially have entered the ninth year of this bull market on March 9th, actually, about two weeks ago making it already the second longest bull market of all time. And if you go back nine years on March 9th of 2009, can you remember where the S&P 500 traded at its lowest? Now, keep in mind the S&P is trading over 2,700 today. Do you remember what the low Bob was on the S&P 500 back in March 9th of 2009? You know, right, there's a, a lot of articles out last week on the nine-year birthday of this big booming bull market. Everybody talks about the close. It closed at 676 on the S&P, but um, intraday, the bottom was actually 666. The sign of the beast. It was a very ominous sign. I remember when it hit 666, which uh, that, was a, that was a terrible day to be a, an investor, oh. let me tell you. Actually, it was a wonderful day to be a buyer. True. If you were on the buy side, you would have made a lot of money because the market has basically quadrupled since we hit that low uh, approximately 10 years ago. So, and on uh, top of crazy. that, Rob, we have the NASDAQ up 600% since that low of 666. Unbelievable. It's good to be a long-term investor and it's always good to be greedy when others are fearful, as the old Warren Buffett quote goes. Also, Bob, this week, we have a listener question. Mm. And if you get this question right, simply email us the, the answer to questions at bebullish.com. So the question would be, how long was the longest bull market and when did it occur? So we're in the middle of the second longest bull market. When was the longest bull market? If you know the answer to that question, email Bob and I at questions at bebullish.com. And if you get it right, Bob and I will send you a prize. So again, when was the longest bull market of all time and what were the dates? At what time frame was the longest bull market? And we'll give you the answer on the show next week. Well, we've got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about market crashes. Yes, they happen. Bob and I have the battle scars to prove it. We're going to discuss some of the major crashes of the last 30 years, what we have learned from them, and give you some strategies on how to protect yourself against the next big market decline. We're going to talk about things you would never say. Bob and I are going to discuss statements you would never make if you set your retirement and investments up correctly, along with this week's financial pornography, a lot of stuff there out there in the financial media you want to avoid at all costs. And our spotlight segment today, we have our star financial advisor, Frankie Lagrateria, on the show, and she's going to talk about a real retirement case and some of the issues this couple had with their retirement and investing, so you can avoid those mistakes with your own planning and investing. So Bob, let's hop right to it. Let's talk about the Market Crash Hall of Fame. And when I think about one of the most notable crashes in history is the one you first experienced back in 1987, which has been called infamously Black Monday. You know, what do you remember about Black Monday and what did you learn from that experience? Well, I mostly remember right, it followed Black Friday because Black Friday was a bad day as well. But Black Monday was a, I guess, a life altering event when it came to uh, being a financial advisor and, and an investor as well. <laughs> Why was that? <laughs> well, first of all, Rye, let me tell you, I was in Hawaii when this happened. I was actually up on the Haleakala Crater, 
watching the uh, sunrise when my office called me and told me the market was down 22 percent. Um, that's a buzz, that was, kill. <laughs> that's, that's a good way to ruin a vacation. But you know what also was the dawn of the strategy that we follow at Payne Capital Management, because back in the early 80s, I gave up on the old Wall Street model of, you know, they, they would create a product and then you would find people to sell the product to. And it really was. It was a, a culture of product pushing on Wall Street. And I came up with a unique idea back in the early 80s of investing based on goals. And that the was A-B the birth process. of what we call the A to B strategy. That's right. I mean, back then is when you, which is very, at the time, that was very avant-garde. You came up with the idea that, you know, you invest as a long-term investor. And like, to your point, Bob, you know, you, you use your goals to drive to your your investments as opposed to just picking a product that you think is going to be pretty good to put in your portfolio. Well, here's the best part, right? My clients thought that I called the crash, which is really funny. When I got back from Hawaii, they're saying, why, Bob, thank goodness you called that crash and, and got us allocated long beforehand. And I said, no, I, I didn't do that. My, my team kept saying, Bob, be quiet. A, let them believe that. And I said, no, <laughs> that's not the case. <laughs> and what we found was that with the Black Monday in 1987 is that asset allocation works. You know, right before the market came down 22% on Monday, before it dropped 22%, you know, the 10-year treasury was yielding 10%. Bonds were yielding 10%. Can you imagine that? And so why would you be in the stock market when you get a 10% return on bonds? Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, but at the time, I'm sure interest rates were creeping higher. So you were thinking, oh, well, I'll wait and get a, I'll get a bond at 11%, forget 10%. That's nothing. Yeah. Well, what we did that whole quarter, right, was we took our profit on bonds. We took some money out of the bond market and we bought stocks on sale, which is what you do in a true asset allocated portfolio. And we looked like heroes doing nothing more than following a common sense approach to investing based on goals and having a process-driven strategy as opposed to an event-driven strategy. Well played, Bob. Well played. The next crash that I think about is when I got into the business, mm. and that was the dot-com crash, which basically started around September of 2001. And that's when we saw a huge overvaluation on all these tech companies that had no profits. And then really, it was actually a pretty long crash because it happened over the course of about two years. You also had 9-11 in there where the market sold off heavily after that. So you really had two very painful years, no pun intended. And what I think is interesting about that crash, Bob, it reminds me a lot about the market that we're in right now, where growth stocks are getting very, very overvalued, just like tech stocks and growth stocks did back in the late 90s. Yeah, it's so true. And I remember when you first started in the industry back then, Ry, you were so appreciative of the opportunity. You said, hey, you tell me how much fun this business is. When's that start? <laughs> <laughs> but from a buying opportunity, it was one of the best. And it also, I think, is a good lesson for right now when you look at your portfolio, because yes, the market did crash. But if you were diversified, you actually were positive during those negative years in the market. If you had things like commodities in your portfolio, you had international exposure. And right now is the perfect time you have to look at that again. You know, Is your portfolio getting too centric US into growth stocks like your Amazons, your Googles, your Apples? A lot of these companies that are getting overvalued, you've got to check that risk in your portfolio. If you're thinking to yourself, I need a strategy that protects me from me, <laughs> and one that is properly diversified, that is going to be crash-proof, Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run our total financial master plan and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at everything. If you bring in all of your statements, no matter what financial institution where they're held, we're going to load it all into one personalized portal for you so we can see everything at a bird's eye view and do a full portfolio x-ray. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? There's a lot of hidden costs in investment products. We're going to break it down and show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. We're going to look at income. Income is much more reliable than the fluctuations of the market. We're going to look at the income your portfolio pays and show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. Is your portfolio crash-proof? Are you going to be protected when the next downturn happens? We're going to show you the flaws or where the risks are in your portfolio to bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together and we're going to determine that age-old question. 
are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. Now, if you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will create for you your own personalized total financial master plan, no obligation, no cost, no strings attached, but you got to text or call 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Rye Payne. We are the pain of no pain, no gain financial radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer of Payne Capital Management. And the recent price action in global markets has been very reminiscent of what we used to call the risk-on, risk-off environment of a few years ago. When it seemed each day, global investors showed up either ready to buy or ready to sell and, and generally didn't waver from that bias. Only this week, it was risk on in the morning, pushing markets higher, and risk off in the afternoon, wiping out the gains for the day, basically leaving the markets essentially flat or even for the week. Now, volatility, if you haven't noticed, has obviously picked up in 2018 versus last year, where we only had eight total days in which the S&P closed up or down 1%. Already this year, or only mid-March, we've seen twice as many, 16 days, when the market has risen or fallen 1%. Although different from last year, the recent volatility is much more consistent with the kind of swings the market has delivered historically. There's been no shortage of news stories to blame or no shortage of opinions on what their impact should be on the market. But remember, political news, geopolitics is what I call noise. It's a motive. And as an indicator, it should largely be ignored. When it comes to the market, you simply have to expect volatility. There's considerable academic research that shows recent volatility has little, if any, predictive value. It doesn't tell you whether the market's going to be higher. It doesn't tell you whether or not the market's going lower. Remember, the stock gods created volatility to keep the average investor poor. So who benefits from market volatility? Well, it's you, the informed long-term investor with a defined asset allocation, a process-driven strategy based on your goals and your dreams that rebalances their portfolio in all market environments. See, the informed long-term investor understands that volatility in most financial media is just noise designed to keep the average investor unsettled, obsessed, and unfortunately, underinvested. Now, if you're wondering if you have a portfolio that's built to win, why sit there and wonder when you could know? Call or text us at 844 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone, gird your loins. Let's find out. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I are simple men. We like to keep it simple. So we're going to keep it simple for you with very common sense, practical advice that you can use for your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide that gives you the highlights of the new tax reform. If you'd like to get an access to that, simply text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555 555- 888, and you can get the highlights of the new tax reform. Simple doc, give you everything you need to know about taxes in 2018. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. In this segment, we want to talk about things that nobody says. Bob, let's discuss some statements you and I have never heard anyone say to you, but probably heard the opposite from time to time. So, Bob, here's the first statement. It makes me feel patriotic to pay more taxes than I have to, so I don't enjoy finding ways to pay less. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that. Uh, I know I've never said that. I know you've never said that. But if we said it to our CPA, you know what he would say, Ryan? Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, but don't give in any extra. I mean, why pay more than you have to? I mean, it's human nature to try and reduce your taxes to increase your rate of return. 
And what blows my mind is we see every week people behaving absolutely contrary to their own nature. They own mutual funds where they're paying extra taxes every year. They own taxable bonds where they could have bonds that are tax free. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing if you just think about the structure of your portfolio from a tax standpoint. And that's one thing we like to do is when we design a portfolio is make it as tax efficient as possible. And that's why also if you ever bring in your tax return, we have on our CPAs review it just to see where you're paying unnecessary taxes. But the way I look at it, Bob, is a lot of times you can get an investment where you've made a lot of money on it in any given year, but the taxes were so high, by the time that you paid the taxes on the return, you were better off with a lower returning investment that had very minimal taxes to pay. So it's not really about the return that you get, it's about the return that you receive after taxes. So true, Ry. It's not about what you make, it's what you keep. And um, you know, last I checked, you can't buy groceries with relative performance. You have to do it with actually after-tax dollars. So you know, and look, we're all patriotic. We want to pay our taxes, but why pay any more than have to? Yeah, and there's so many ways to structure your portfolio to optimize it for taxes, especially as you're getting down the home stretch here. When you're getting out five, ten years to retirement, in retirement, what we call the wealth distribution stage, you want to be able to access the money from your portfolio with the least amount of taxes or in the most tax efficient manner. And there's a lot of strategies to do that. Another statement, Bob, we've never heard anyone say ever is I love the big market corrections. It's like a fun roller coaster ride. 2008 was probably my favorite year. I don't know whose favorite year that would be. Nobody loves corrections. You know, the old adage, the old Bobism is bull markets are much more fun than bear markets. You started at a bear market, and then seven years later, you had another bear market. So you were tested by fire, right? How do you feel about the market today? I'm tired, Bob. I'm really tired. (laughs) But I will say this, and this is where having a properly diversified portfolio is critical, is those bear markets or those pullbacks in the market are always your best opportunity if you're set up correctly. And what I mean by that is, let's face it, and we were talking about this in the last segment, when the market's down... When everyone is panicking, anytime you buy during those dips, you end up getting the best return on your money long term. Not so true, and I think that uh, you could study the markets, you know, all year long, like I do and like you do. But when it comes to making investment decisions, it's emotional. And my mentor taught me to, you know, use your head but follow your gut. And if you're a great investor, the best time to buy is when you want to throw up all over your keyboard before you hit that buy button. You know, we're all human nature. And how many times, Rob, you and I walked out of the building, took a walk around the block, you know, just to clear our head because the market is an emotional place. And if you're going to be a great investor, you're going to feel it. Yeah. And I think the other thing is that it also speaks to why you need an unemotional investment discipline. And that's really the whole idea of that A to B process that you created a couple decades ago is number one, you want to tie everything into your goals but also you want to have decisions on your portfolio that are unemotional. And you know, that's a perfect example of that is when the market's doing really well, like it is right now, you've got to have some sort of discipline that says, this is when I take money out of the markets, I re-diversify that money. And I add things like more bonds in my portfolio. I add to different parts of the market that are down and vice versa. You know, when the market is selling off, you know, you need that, that war chest of bonds or safe investments in your portfolio so that you can go in and actually add money to the markets when they're down. But you know, there's got to be a discipline around that. And that's really the process that we've been fine-tuning now for 40 years is a discipline to, to take advantage of markets ups and market downs, no matter what's happening. Yeah. Without process, Rye, you're going to fall into your fears every single time. It's human nature. I've seen it through every cycle over 43 years. Process-driven investing trumps event-driven investing every day of the week. And it's so rare. Other thing that nobody says, Bob, ever (laughs) is in retrospect, I should have spent more and saved less over the years because now I don't know what to do with all this money before I die. (laughs) Yeah. You know, one of my clients came up with a great idea, Rye. He he put into his trust, he's going to be buried in a mausoleum and he's going to put an ATM on the outside of the mausoleum, and you can only take out $200 a day. That way he guarantees his children are going to come see him when he's up in heaven. <laughs> that's a great strategy, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's, the, again, if you're down the home stretch for retirement, you're planning, I mean, the, the, the savings that you're going to put away is very critical. And again, going back to what we talked about earlier, is doing it as tax efficiently as possible as well. And then when you're in retirement, enjoying retirement, again, looking at it from the most tax efficient standpoint and making sure that you're not going to run out of money 
And that's why it's so critical, Bob, to run that, have an income plan. Look at all the incomes that you're going to have coming in retirement or you have coming in retirement now, if you're already there, but then looking at what's going to fill in the gap. Because we know Social Security is not going to cover all your retirement expenses. We know that inflation is going to go up or the cost of living. You know, Just think about this. Every million dollars you have right now is going to be worth a half a million dollars in 20 years just because of the cost of living. And then those pesky healthcare costs, which could be another quarter of a million dollars out of your portfolio, all this stuff needs to be planned for. And that's why looking at the savings and the withdrawals are so critical. You know, Ryan, it's not just you, it's your children that you should also be sitting down with or have us sit down with to make sure that they're doing the groundwork that their parents did to get to the point where they can retire comfortably and live with a lifetime of income that they can't outlive. We're sitting down with all our clients' children now, making sure that they're maxing out their 401k contributions, that they're taking advantage of the health savings accounts, that they understand you know, what they're going to own and why they're going to own it, and the discipline that they need to bring you know, to having a financial plan. It's the best time to start saving money is when you're making it, right, from day one. And if you want to be certain that your children are saving enough money or that you are in a position to retire comfortably and have a lifetime of income you can't outlive, make sure you're not paying too much in taxes. You know, why be overcharged by the U.S. government if you don't love big corrections because you're taking more risk than necessary in your portfolio? Well, what we'd like to offer, if you're one of the next few callers and you saved over 200000 for retirement, my son and I will run for you your own total financial master plan. Now, this is a full holistic review. We'll even give you access to our 360 financial portal, which will look at all the concepts and look at your entire financial plan holistically. We'll have our CPA partner review your tax return to make sure that you're not paying more than necessary to the U.S. government. We'll look at your legal documents to make sure that your estate plan is not an IOU to the IRS. And lastly, we want to review your entire investment portfolio. Now, and it takes a lot of time to pull out all those statements. Hey, when those envelopes come in, stick them in a shopping bag, pick up the phone, give us a call. We're going to do a full portfolio x-ray on your portfolio with our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. Now, this is a simple three-page document where we'll look at the three core elements of a successful portfolio. Diversification, fees, and income. We find that you take more risk than necessary to achieve your goals. We want to reduce that risk, but make certain that you have the income that you can depend on in retirement. And finally, what we'll do is we'll tie it all together into one customized financial plan for your family, utilizing strategies that we've been perfecting now for over four decades. See, we want to help take your family from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams, do it with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. Don't waste time. Call or text now, 844 752 6692. That's 844 844- 752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, we'll give you a full holistic review. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Don't waste time. We have 10 slots. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Seven five two six six nine two. This is no pain, no gain. Financial radio. It's time for financial pornography of the week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. Bob, what'd you find out there this week in the horrid world of financial pornography? You know, right, this is where it could become very dangerous because all the financial pornography sites, they roll out the perma bulls, right? People who are, you know, always bullish, no matter what the valuation is on whatever market they're speaking about, but even more dangerous are the perma bears. And this week, oh, yeah. I saw an article on someone that you know, David Rosenberg, uh, who oh, used to hey. be the economist for good old Mother Merrill when we worked there many years ago. That's right. He was always a bear. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yep. Always he was negative. always a bear. And in, this, and in this article, he, of course, is bearish. His outlook is very bearish. He thinks stocks are overvalued at the present level. He sees a double top in the stock market. 
And you know what? Here's the best part about the article. They tell you that he was one of the first Wall Street strategists to turn bullish following 2008, which is totally untrue. Really? Do you remember yes. back in 2008, he was, uh, he was still bearish all the way until even when the market turned around? Well, here's the thing. I mean, he made a great call because he was bearish in 2007, but he never changed. Matter of fact, back in 2008, 2009, 2010, he said the United States was in a depression and that the stock market <laughs> had nowhere to go but down. He never <laughs> turned bullish to and this day. The, so now you have someone day. who's telling you that the market is too risky to invest in, who's been saying the same thing for nine years, and he read an article like he's been bullish since 2008, and that's why financial pornography is so dangerous. Now, how do you prevent yeah. falling into that trap, right? Well, I think first off, the problem with making a call to get out of the market, right? One of these uh, one of these all or none calls is we talk about this a lot, but you don't have to be right once. You now have to be right twice because when you get back in the market, and this is a perfect example where somebody made this great call to get out of the market, looks like a genius, but then he never got back in. And the reality of it is the markets are much higher today than they were even at the peak of the market in 07. So getting that one move right doesn't help in the long term. And if you can't be right twice, and I'm just a normal average human being, Bob, as you like to say, I can imagine trying to be right over and over again. It's virtually impossible. Well, it just goes back to the old saying, right? Economists exist and make market projections simply to make fortune tellers look good. <laughs> And another, that's so true. Another master of the universe uh, who is in the financial pornography media very often is Jeffrey Gunlock, who is mm. called the Bond King. And he made a very provocative statement uh, this past week that if the 10 year treasury goes to 3%, it's going to spell the end of this bull market. Now, first off, the 10 year treasury right now is trading at like 2. Point, I don't know, 2.8, 2.9%. So to go to 3% is not that far away. But that's a very crazy call to make, Bob, that that's going to end the bull market. I just can't imagine anyone basing their whole investment strategy on one tenth of 1% of uh, <laughs> in interest rates to blow up your whole strategy of achieving your goals and to have you know, to have that decision made on one tenth of one percent is just insane. Well, I think the other the other underlying theme here, and you might see this as you're watching the financial media and the news, is this big fear of inflation kicking in. And what we forget is having some inflation is actually a good thing. That means mm -hmm. the economy is heating up. And I know we have a lot of fear back, remember back in the late 70s, early 80s when we had hyperinflation. But what we don't, what we forget is it took ten years to get there. You, know, you don't see an economy that's been growing very slowly for the last eight, nine years, like our economy has been, and all of a sudden, you know, we go from being the tortoise to a rocket ship. It just doesn't happen. So I think what we have to really glean from this information that if we start seeing inflation as an investor, that's a positive sign. It's not a negative sign, which drives me crazy. Yeah, and, and it's positive for the equity market because stocks will go up. But it's also positive for the bond market if you have the right type of bond portfolio. If you have a maturing bond, whether it's a CD or a treasury bond or a corporate or municipal bond, right? do you want to reinvest that money at a higher rate of return or a lower rate of return? Is this a trick question, Bob? <laughs> well, no, you would think that because people keep saying, oh my goodness, interest rates are going to go up. Well, we're cheering because we want to reinvest every dollar we have in the bond market at a higher rate. And then when they come due the next time, whether it's one year, two years, three years, or four years, I want an even higher rate of return. I mean, it's common sense. So don't be fearful of inflation. We want inflation. We want interest rates to go up. We want the stock market to continue to be this big booming stock market we've been in now for nine years. Yeah, but I think it also poses another point that I think you really have to think about when you're evaluating your portfolio, and we've talked about this a lot recently, is the portfolio of the last 10 years is not going to be successful the next 10 years. Because if you look at the last 10 years, we didn't have inflation at all. We actually had deflation. Remember, interest mm -hmm. rates were coming down. Furthermore, is what we call a US centric market. The US was the only game in town for, you know, for about 8 of the last 9 years or so. All those dynamics have now changed, Bob. No, it has, Ryan. And that's why, you know, we talk about diversification, but I mean, you hear that all the time. You hear about be diversified. What it really means is having different parts of the economy, different parts of the of the market, financial markets in your portfolio. Everything goes in and out of favor, right? Valuations are important. I don't know if you noticed, right? Trees don't grow to the sky. 
<laughs> not in my lifetime, Bob. Not in my yeah. lifetime. And, and markets are no different. No, and that's a funny thing when you when you talk about markets, right? When you hear about financial pornography channels talking about markets, they never talk about which ones. They only talk about the S and P five hundred and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. What about emerging markets? Europe, Japan, China, India. You have the commodity markets, the bond markets, the, you know, you have municipal bonds, treasury bonds. There's so many different types of investments. Diversification is about spreading out your risk and having different portions of your portfolios invested in different periods and for different periods of time. Yeah. And I think right now is that time to really evaluate that because now, remember, we're in synchronized global growth around the world. There's many markets and economies around the world that are growing faster and they're a lot cheaper and inflation is kicking in. So you can't ignore it, but you need to have a portfolio that takes advantage of that. And if you want the portfolio of the next 10 years, not the last 10 years, Here's your shot to get a full review. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at everything. If you bring in all your financial statements, no matter where that money's held, we're going to load everything into a personalized portal for you. Look at it from a holistic view. If you bring in last year's tax return, we'll have our CPA partner review that to make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. And if you dust off those old legal docs, we'll have our estate planning partner review that to make sure that your wills, trusts are updated. Then we're going to do a full analysis on your entire portfolio with our portfolio x-ray. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? What hidden costs do you have in your portfolio? Do you have a lot of high cost annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products? Bob and I are going to show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical for retirement and much more reliable than market fluctuations. We're going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. Is your portfolio set up for the next 10 years, not the last 10 years? Do you have inflation hedges in your portfolio? Is it globally diversified? Bob and I are going to show you all the pitfalls in your portfolio and make sure that your portfolio is bulletproof, retirement ready. Then we're going to tie it all together and we're going to determine that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, there'll be a few spots left. If you have over 200000 saved for your retirement, our team will run for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation or cost but you need to text us or call 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Drinking your hand and your toes in the sand. Now that's a very cool way to work on your retirement planning. And that is just what you can do with Payne Capital Management, as they also have offices in North and South Florida. So stop in and see them when you're on vacation and tell them Ron sent you. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain, financial radio. And Bob and I like to keep it simple and we're going to keep it simple for you. That's why we put together our latest guide, the highlights of the new tax reform that you can download for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B U L L I S H, to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555 888. Get our latest guide that just gives you the highlights of the new tax reform. Be ready for taxes in 2018. Simply text the word bullish to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555 888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, check out how handsome Bob's hair is. You can simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. You can sign up for all our weekly updates, be up to date with all Bob and I's latest thinking. Also, you can check me out every Tuesday at 11 o'clock on Fox Business News with Stuart Varney, just giving a quick update on the markets. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, Bob and I will answer those questions directly. Simply email us at questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I will answer all the questions you might have. And if it's a really good question, we're going to answer it right here on the show. 
And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. Bob, the first question comes in for you. It's Charles, who's in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. I used to live there in college. Charles writes in, Bob, with so much market uncertainty recently, is this a good time to buy bonds? Well, Charles, that's a great question. And the problem with your question is this, when is there not uncertainty? So there's always market uncertainty, whether it comes to interest rates, the currency, earnings, the economy, Washington, there's always uncertainty. And we have a great saying on Wall Street, and it's markets climb a wall of worry. Because as soon as they resolve one issue, they're already focused on the next issue because it's all about uncertainty. If there was certainty, you know, no one would need to take any risk at all because there'd be no risk and we'd have a treasury bill return, I guess. So the whole idea is that when you look at the marketplace, don't think about the markets. I mean, we one of my favorite Bobisms is invest in the market you have, not the market you want. Don't you agree, Ry? Bob, that's uh, no true words have been spoken because you're never going to have the market invariably that you want. You know, life doesn't work that way. Well, Charles' question is really about the bond market, Ry. Is it a good time to buy bonds? Well, I think this goes back to what we talked about earlier in the show, and that's with inflation kicking in, interest rates going up, that adversely affects bond prices. Bond prices go down. However, it doesn't mean that bonds aren't a necessary component to the portfolio. And this is where we discern, Bob, between why we don't like bond funds and it's critical to own your bonds outright. Yeah, it really is. And now the other thing is when I talk to you about your portfolio, you know, people always talk about how much money I can make or how much I can risk. With a bond portfolio, you know, you make money every single day. You know, your bond accrues interest every single day. Your stock portfolio accrues dividends every single day. Now, it doesn't pay out every day. You get your dividends on a quarterly distribution. You get your bonds on a six-month distribution, but they're earned. So your money's actually working all the time. And over the last 100 years, Rye, what percentage of the return came from appreciation versus dividends and interest? Yeah. I mean, if you look at a balanced portfolio, realistically, more of your return, more than 50% is going to come from income. It's not going to come from the market going up or the market going down, your volatility per se. It's, it's really about income. And that's the one point that gets missed, especially when you're building a reliable portfolio for retirement. You know, what I would say to Charles Rye is that the two things you really have to know about when it comes to investing, every day time passes, whether you're having fun or not, right? Time passes and markets operate and they don't care what you think. So what you have to do is embrace the uncertainty, embrace the volatility, build a portfolio that allows you to sleep at night and also overcomes inflation, achieves your goals. Now that could be proven to you in writing, you know, with various investment tools that are out there. And it's just, I think people focus too much on the wrong area. You really want to focus on what you can control. What you can control is how you invest and how you diversify your portfolio based on your goals, not somebody else's thoughts or fears. Yeah. And just a caveat there, when you're buying the bond portion of your portfolio, you need to be very, very careful. I would you know, stay away from bond funds right now because you don't own them. You don't get a return of principal. And that's where there's more sophisticated ways to buy bonds and cheaper ways through things like institutional management. You should definitely do some research on. The next question that comes in is from Patty who's in Tenafly, New Jersey. She writes in, Ryan, my financial advisor seems to do a good job of managing my investments as far as I can tell, but we never talk about other things like social security or life insurance or legacy plans, which are all things I feel I should be getting advice on. Is this typical? Unfortunately, Patty, yes, it is typical. A lot of times you end up having what we would call a broker who may have a name like a financial advisor but if you feel like you just have a collection of investments that you've been sold where there's no real planning around it, and that planning is just that. It's like, when do I take Social Security? What incomes am I going to have in retirement? Is my family protected if I'm not on God's green earth? Do I need insurance? What type of insurance? Is my estate plan set up correctly? Is my money going to go to my heirs with the least amount of government partnership? It's really about that holistic plan. And I have to say, Bob, it's probably more rare than common that you have a quote unquote financial advisor that's giving that type of advice. Well, that's the problem with our industry, Rye. It's, a, it's called the financial services industry. And there's really, it should be called the financial sales industry because most products are sold by sales type people in our industry. And they're, they're really focused on their commissions and their return as opposed to the client. You know, holistic planning is something that's done naturally by a fiduciary. 
So the first thing that Patty should do is make sure that her financial advisor is a fiduciary. And second, see if he's a CFP. I mean, you, you want a certified financial planner on the team to make sure that all these other issues are addressed because they're just as important. If you don't title your assets properly, you don't set up the right estate plan. You know, like we talked about earlier, right? It's not the money you make, it's the money you keep. Yeah. And I think there's there's three litmus tests that you can give your financial advisor or the, the advisor that you're interviewing to make sure that you're getting your basis covered. And I think number one is, is planning being done first, right? You never want to put the cart before the horse. So any recommendations that you're getting, is that based on a plan that was put together for you? And what I mean by a plan is, has someone sat down with you and looked at what your income needs are going to be throughout retirement, what you need to be saving if you're not retired now, how you're going to draw income from your portfolio, and how you're going to account for things like cost of living going up, medical costs, you know, taxes, all these things that are very, very important. That's number one. Number two, what you want to look at is what you just said, Bob. You want to find out, is the advisor you're working with an actual certified financial planner? Are they a fiduciary? Which most advisors are not, believe it or not. You need to find that out as well. And then thirdly, is your plan being updated often? If you went in for that first meeting, someone did put together a financial plan. Is that being updated every 12 months? Because if it's not, it has no value. Financial planning is a working document. It's not something that you just put together and you just let it run for years. It needs to be tweaked and it needs to be looked at often. So, Rod, what you're saying for Patty is that she really needs a holistic financial plan. And when you talk to someone like Patty, on a scale of one to 10, how financially organized would you say she is? Oh, Patty, it's not pretty and you're not alone. You know, just like most of us, you're probably about a three. You kind of know where things are, you haven't really mapped out the income plan. So I'm going to say a hard three, Bob, for most of us with our financial planning and organization. And I know you, Rye, you think everybody should be ranked at 10. And if you would like to rank at 10, if you'd like to have all of your financial documents and data organized and simplified, all you have to do is be one of our next few callers. So if you've saved over 200000 for retirement, my son and I will create for you your own 360 customized financial portal. In other words, a total financial master plan, which means all of your account numbers, passwords, security questions that you have for all these bank accounts, annuities, fixed annuities, brokerage statements, anything that has a statement and online access, you can simplify it and organize it into one financial portal. Wouldn't it be amazing to be financially organized? If something happened to you, think about how easy it would be for your family or your wife or your spouse to keep your life working or transition your financial affairs. The great thing about planning is not just the process of putting the plan together, but having someone update that plan in real time to make certain that you not just have a financial plan, but that you're on plan. And if you are one of the next few callers, what we'll do for you is we'll put together your own personal wealth projection to answer that age old question, are you gonna outlive your money? Or is your money gonna outlive you? Utilizing strategies that we've been perfecting now at Payne Capital Management, for over 40 years. That's correct, folks, four decades. We wanna help take your family, as we have many families, from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams, with your values, do it with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time, call or text now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Nine two. We have a couple slots left, so if you call us now, you get a holistic review at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, over $200,000 safe for retirement, we'll do our full master plan. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Nine two. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Here's this week's spotlight on no pain, no gain. It's no pain, no gain. Financial Radio, and Bob and I want to keep it simple and educate you. That's why we put together our latest guide on tax reform, the highlights of the new tax reform, which you can download for free. If you text the word bullish to 555-888, that's the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. Get all the highlights of the new tax reform. Simply 
text the word bullish to 555-888. That's bullish to 555-888. And now it's time for our spotlight segment. This is where we take a real retirement case every week and we talk about some of the flaws or what we call pain points. That's P-A-Y-N-E for the record that these particular pre or retirees are making with their investing. And we have a very special guest on the show. Yes, it is Frankie. Frankie Lagrateria, who has all the best financial friends in the world. Hello. I don't make any sense at all, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> it, is a, it is an elite club with a bunch of cool kids. <laughs> so, Frank, nice to have you on the show this morning. Yes, thank you for having me. So, why don't you talk about the case that you worked on this past week and some of the you know, issues that this couple had with their investing and what you did to fix it. Absolutely. So this episode is brought to you by annuities. So today Ooh. we are going into a full annuity portfolio. We have three million all invested in three different annuities. And a little bit about the couple, just so you have an idea of, of who they are. They are a hard, hardworking, conservative couple who you know has these annuities because they want to make sure that they have their principal saved because they are very family oriented they want to make sure they have a legacy plan they are hoping to be tax efficient and they you know one of their main points was fees versus returns yeah and if you look at this i mean right off the bat that's that's one of the biggest problems with this plan are the fees inside these annuities are exorbitant like oh my god i'm in shock right now frankie yes actually <laughs> we ran an analysis and they're paying over sixty thousand dollars in fees. Sixty thousand. That's, that's a nice new car every year. <laughs> that's like a human being salary. <laughs> that's all they need is that one, you know, that one client under their belt. They probably don't have any other people. <laughs> no, but that's a lot of money to be paying on fees, and that's a lot of money for you to be dishing out. On top of that, you know, annuities don't have that current income that Bob and Ryan are always, always preaching about. And that's really going to be a key factor when it comes to retirement is having that income and getting them into a conservative, diversified portfolio with a with bonds. We can update their values of income from zero to a hundred thousand dollars a year. Wow. A hundred thousand dollars a year. So they're paying sixty thousand dollars a year to underperform. And so the insurance company can invest the money in a portfolio mm -hmm. like you're recommending. And sure. just for the privilege to underperform and not be able to get your money when you need it. Hmm. That sounds like a good deal to me. Could it be the insurance company? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what we should do. We'll come back as insurance companies, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely an idea. <laughs> um, yeah. But another point of, of what they, they want is legacy planning, right? So you have this mm -hmm. annuity, you turn on the annuity, you get this income stream for life. If you live to 200, you made out because you get income, you know, every year's generating. However, we ran an analysis saying that they, you know, annuitize at the retirement age at 65. And because of their fees are so high, their cash balance is zeroed out by 80. That's yeah. nothing for their kids. And I mean, we all, I mean, let's face it, um, a lot of us are living now to like 90. Yeah, you're right. The fees just eat away at that benefit. And that's the other irony with a lot of these type of investments. It sounds so great to hear I'm going to get income for life. But like anything else in life, to get something, you have to give something up, specifically with annuities. And the thing that you give up, which I think is very dangerous in retirement, is your principal. You can't touch your principal anymore once you turn that income stream on. And to me, that's a very risky place to be. Oh, absolutely. Especially, you know, these people are, like I said, hardworking. You know, they have their own business. They have a, you know, a family that they take care of and they love very much. You know, big expenses pop up out of nowhere. You know, mm. everyone can, you know, talk about a time where, oh, I didn't know I was going to have to spend, you know, 50000 on this. So you, why lock up your money? Why have to pay someone to get your money back? that you worked for. <laughs> it's your money. <laughs> right. On average, what does that lifetime income usually work out to in percentage terms based on the average normal life of, uh, of people today? Maybe about, I mean, on average, I would say like a 3% return. You know, they throw these guarantees out like you're going to get a guaranteed 6% and then withdraw it at a 5% return. And you hear all these numbers and you think you're getting a guaranteed 5 or 6% return. It's not true. They're just telling you how they calculate the math. So when you hear I'm getting a guaranteed 6 or 7% and you, that's what you think you have, you, you probably don't really have that. And it means you need to investigate what are you really getting from the insurance company. And what we've estimated for the most part is maybe you're getting like a 3% guaranteed return, not the 6 or 7 that you think you're promised. Well, I think that's where people really need help, don't you, Frankie? Because when you call the insurance person that sold you the annuity, 
they give you another sales pitch. When you call the insurance company, they give you a lot of numbers that unless you're really equipped with a financial degree, it's really hard to discern what those numbers tell you. Oh, absolutely. You know, I have I have clients who said, everything's on the statement, Frank. Everything's on the statement. We don't need a call. And I'm like, oh, you will be surprised. <laughs> and then, you know, after, you know, 10 minutes of them talking, they're like, wait a minute, my fee just tripled. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, 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 it was always there, friends. <laughs> we just didn't know. <laughs> Another really big point that I do want to make sure that everyone's aware of is the tax implications. A lot of people think because they have these annuities and they get this income stream that it's going to be a tax efficient way of getting this. But if you have a non-qualified annuity, you're paying income tax every time you pull out of that, anything above the cost basis. Yeah. So not to dive too much into the weeds, but... You're getting slapped on with another fee from Uncle Sam. <laughs> yeah, not to mention a tax-free bond portfolio is tax-free. <laughs> so it's so much better than having a, an, you know, an annuity that's not tax-free. Well, great job on this case, Frank. I mean, this is awesome. I mean, you did a great job on this case. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Keep telling me more. <laughs> and if you're thinking to yourself, you know, I'm looking at annuities, I have an annuity, wouldn't it be so much better to not give up your principal and have income coming in every year? In this case, $100,000 that has nothing to do with the market going up or down. There's so many better ways to cut that cake. If you're one of the next few callers, you have a couple slots left and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, we'll do a full analysis just like this. We'll look at everything for you. You bring in all your statements. If you have annuities, all your brokerage accounts, your 401ks, insurance policies, we're going to review everything. We're going to build you your own personalized portal so we can look at everything from a holistic approach, one login, and we're going to do a full x-ray of all of your portfolio. So we're going to look at fees. Are you paying exorbitant amount of fees a year? Are you paying 60 grand a year in fees you shouldldn't be paying? We're going to show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio. We're going to look at income. Do you want to create a hundred thousand dollars of tax-free income that has liquidity attached to it? We're going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio, and we're going to look at diversification. Are you protected against the next downturn in the markets? We're going to show you exactly where the risks are in your portfolio, and then we're going to tie it all together. And we're going to determine that age-old question: Are you going to outlive your money, or more importantly? Is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, we've been working on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Our team will create for you your own personal holistic financial master plan. No obligation, no cost. Just give us a call or text 844-752-6692. Woo, what another great show. And I mean, after that episode, how can you not want to be one of Frankie's financial friends? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I got plenty of calls asking. (laughs) One of the mysteries of the the universe, (laughs) right? Well, Frank, thanks for being on the show this morning. Thank you very much, and a happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Happy St. Patty's Day. Hope everyone's recovered. (laughs) We're in the green. (laughs) (laughs) Big Bob, enjoy the rest of that weekend in sunny Florida, my man. Yeah, Ryan, I'll have to uh, drown my sorrow in a little green beer as I watch all the teams that I didn't pick play in March Madness later today. (laughs) Oh, man, I feel you, Bob. St. John's didn't Mm. make it either. Oof, Mm. sorry to hear. Sorry to hear. Well, drown yourself in that green beer. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.